Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you again for joining us uh, for our New Hampshire COVID-19 Vaccine Alliance meetings. Uh, again, to those who are new, new with this call, um, you can put the slides back up, please. Um, thank you. Uh, again, the intent of this is to convene stakeholders uh, uh, who are interested to promote the vaccine confidence, support accurate and consistent vaccine messaging, and foster coordination of the vaccine's allocation process. To do that, uh, our goal is to start to promote public buy-in uh, to help increase uh, immunization rates, uh, to act as a force multiplier uh, to support the state's vaccine communication allocation plans, um, and uh, third, to counter misinformation about the vaccines and foster use of New Hampshire's immunization information system. Thank you. Uh, thank you again to our, our sponsors, Harvard Pilgrim, uh, Anthem, uh, Dairy Medical uh, Care, uh, Kevin MD, uh, Wellsense Health Plans, and New Hampshire Healthy Families Health Plans. Today's agenda, uh, we're gonna focus on what's occurring on developing across the state in mobile immunization health plans. Um, to do that, we're going to uh, have start with the state's initiative on a mobile vaccine initiative. Um, uh, we're going to talk about the joint Harvard Pilgrim Northern uh, New Hampshire Hospitals mobile event project. Then move on to uh, Manchester Wow or Wheels on Wellness and their summer series. And then we'll also talk uh, with uh, the Greater New Hampshire Regional Public Health Network about their van, ex, uh, van experience and address any uh, questions that you have uh, through the program um, as we're, we're moving forward. Um, next slide, please. Um, here are some recent um, uh, alliance discussions that you might be interested in, in going back to uh, from legal issues uh, to implementing the IIS uh, to uh, our last meeting uh, discussion with uh, Governor Kristen Nunu uh, about the transition process uh, from a predominantly public to a private sector uh, vaccine effort um, and AARP New Hampshire's It's Time campaign uh, that will be launching in the next week here. These are all available uh, on the Medical Society's uh, website under the news blog uh, area. Some takeaways since our last Alliance meeting. Uh, Vinny, uh, the system that was used to essentially schedule um, uh, register and schedule uh, individuals uh, in the state and across and outside the state now, uh, will uh, be dis discontinued um, at the end of June um, when the state managed sites also close. Um, currently, there are more than uh, 450 locations across the state that will offer uh, the vaccines um, according to the Division of Public Health Services, um, uh, averaging about 47 new provider sites uh, per week uh, in June um, that have been added to those roles. Um, and uh, the public is going to be encouraged to visit vaccines.gov. Um, and there will be a listing of locations I went on. Um, and by zip code, they'll give you up to 50 locations uh, from your uh, zip code within 50 miles. Next slide, please. So again, preparing for the vaccine allocation transition process, uh, the biggest thing that we've heard is it's really getting staff signed up and trained on the uh, NHIIS uh, system. That's really the first step and it's actually that in the registration process that's holding those from going to um, the transition to HL7 messaging. Um, so the sooner that your hospitals and practices have your staff trained up, and you can validate that, um, then it takes you to the next step in a six step process for uh, that HL7 uh, messaging. Um, also uh, making sure that you have operational uh, plans in place. Um, there is a new uh, vaccine promotion FAQs information. And we'll also let, uh, include in the information um, afterward, um, additional uh, information from uh, uh, federal sources. Um, uh, that uh, we're involved with. So uh, the federal, there is uh, federal funding uh, available and uh, the Medical Society uh, at the request of the Division of Public Health Service uh, 
uh, surveyed 23 independent pediatric and primary care clinical practices um, uh, in early in June, uh, early uh, in June, and had this information back. Uh, essentially, what are the startup costs? And mostly, it's related to the uh, HL7 integration. Um, the IT needs to do that uh, forward. Um, some storage um, and then supplemental promotion and communications marketing efforts. Right now, what we're hearing is um, because the emergency order has ceased, now any even federal grants have to go through uh, the New Hampshire Legislative Fiscal Committee process and the GNC um, authorization practice as governor and council authorization process. So it's likely going to be until uh, I think that first August meeting until the governor and council approves those. And so we expect uh, sometime in, um, in uh, early to mid August that those contracts uh, will be approved um, to, uh, to move forward uh, that federal funding to assist uh, various practices um, in moving forward. Next slide. And uh, those uh, three um, uh, uh, sections for uh, funding are first, the independent primary care practices, uh, second, uh, federally qualified community health centers, and then the third uh, will be hospitals uh, as moving forward. So three buckets of funds, again, we're looking at uh, application distribution. Um, we'll put that, that in motion um, as soon as that's available, we're anticipating uh, late summer, probably August uh, for those funds. Uh, in the interim, probably getting those, um, again, uh, making sure that you're uh, getting staff trained and registered for uh, the IIS is uh, the big kind of bottleneck at, at this point for, for many practices and hospitals moving forward. And also, always, uh, we would suggest to you that um, you there are other uh, information sessions. Um, I believe uh, Drs. Chan, um, Talbot um, and um, uh, Daly uh, do a weekly on Thursdays um, uh, that's very good on the clinical information um, surrounding um, that. And those are typically taped, so you can go to um, uh, the uh, vaccine website to get that information. Also continuing on a biweekly basis in the early part of the month are for education and for long-term care. Uh, you may be interested. So, uh, without uh, further ado here, we'd like to move the conversation to talk about uh, what's happening in the state. Um, and I'd like to uh, welcome Taylor uh, uh, Salembo uh, and Elizabeth Whitney uh, from uh, the Vaccine Equity, Equity Allocation Branch um, as part of the Division of Public Health Services to talk a little bit more about uh, what the state is doing uh, for a their uh, mobile vaccine ban initiative. So uh, Taylor and uh, Elizabeth, uh, take it away. All right. Hi, everyone. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can. OK, great. So like Jim said, we're just going to talk really briefly about what we've done at the state in terms of vaccine allocation with an equity lens. So Elizabeth and I are from the vaccine equity allocation branch. So this has been a dedicated branch to um, promote, you know, equitable vaccine allocation. So today we're just going to talk a little bit about that background and then I'll pass it off to Elizabeth to talk about the mobile vaccination van um, and what our plans are with that and how we would love to collaborate with you all in any similar efforts you're doing. So first off, how are we addressing vaccine equity at the state of New Hampshire, especially in our allocation process? So when we developed the allocation plan in the beginning, we allocated 10% of the available vaccine supply at the state level for deployment in areas disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. So this 10% allocation is specifically to address matters of equity and equitable vaccine distribution. So populations prioritized include those who may experience significant disproportionate impact from COVID-19. So that includes people of color, people experiencing homelessness. Um, and we do have a more detailed list getting into exactly what this means that I'll share as well. 
It also includes people who have limited access to the current vaccine distribution structure and people who have limited access to the registration process. So we identified populations through the COVID-19 Community Vulnerability Index and US Census data. If you're not familiar with the community, uh, the COVID-19 Community Vulnerability Index, it is the typical social vulnerability index, but added with factors that affect COVID-19 such as um, community levels of transmission and hospital capacity and comorbidities. So looking at this um, allocation, we distributed vaccines predominantly through mobile vaccination clinic sites with the regional public health networks, um, playing a huge role in getting these vaccines out to communities, particularly um, at sites that are familiar to community members and accessible to community members. So you can read more, I'll send this link in the chat as well, but this is our um, official allocation plan for the equity distribution. So that's a little bit of background. I know um, this group focuses a lot about building vaccine confidence and vaccine hesitancy. So something that we also do is um, lead targeted education efforts, listening sessions, video sessions, and engage with the community on vaccine hesitancy to share what we know about testing, efficacy, side effects, and dispelling any myths. So that's also something um, that we think is really important to increasing vaccine access. We've done sessions in lots of languages and mediums over Zoom or WhatsApp. So if you are connected to a community organization or you wanna request a video session for your community, you can let us know and we're happy to do that as well. We've also shared messaging and communication in different um, languages, depending on what the community members need. And, and it's important to us to make these available in plain language or picture format as well. We've also been partnering with the New Hampshire COVID Equity Task Force, which um, many of you are familiar with or involved in, but it's a community collaborative of over 100 organizations from grassroots to other organizations. And that really helps inform our equity allocation efforts. So this is a screenshot uh, of a graph of some of the communities and places we've served with these equity allocations. So these mobile clinics that are going to the community and bringing vaccine to that community. So some include um, homeless shelters, emergency housing shelters, um, also uh, neighborhoods, people who are low income, people who are experiencing housing insecurity. So this graph on the left shows some of the population descriptors and then on the right, the, the, um, the lower horizontal axis shows the number of clinics. So you can see there have been quite a few clinics for people are, who are homebound, people who are low income, individuals with developmental disabilities. So this is just a screenshot of who we're serving in the beginning. Um, and now as the state fix sites start to wind down, we are wanting to continue this effort um, and general access in the community as well. So what's next for us? I will pass it off to Elizabeth to talk a little bit about our mobile van effort. Hello all. Um, so we're going to have a, a mobile van coming up and it's going to hopefully work in conjunction with a lot of other groups um, as the military is shutting down its fixed and its mobile sites um, by the end of this month, which is, as you all know, is just next week-ish. Um, so moving on. Um, so the what does the vaccine equity allocation branch do? Well, we collaborate with our partners to enhance existing vaccine distribution efforts. We're uh, facilitating any new efforts to make vaccine accessible, focusing on making vaccine accessible to those populations who are disproportionately impacted um, and or are vulnerable to the COVID, um, disproportionately more vulnerable to the COVID-19 as well. And we're engaging with community partners to promote vaccine confidence. Uh, we bring vaccines to community members in locations that are familiar and accessible. So anybody's eligible to request the, the new mobile vaccination van. Um, and we expect this van to be up and running mid-July. We just contracted with um, Convenient MD. Uh, we, we understand that that is now uh, finalized. And so we're gonna be rolling that out hopefully in the next two and a half weeks. Um, we're going to partner on this van, working very closely with the regional public health networks and other partners to distribute vaccine. So please let us know how we can support your existing efforts in vaccine distribution. 
If you have a location or an event in mind where you would like to see a vaccine clinic set up, please let us know. The uh, way to reach out to us is going to be through this email. So thus far, our outreach targets are the regional public health networks. We want to support you in any way we can. Critical access hospitals in New Hampshire, community events. We've distributed a summer and fall list and would love for people to um, let us know <clears throat> if there are any other events that we need to add to the list. We're trying to um, assist government efforts, businesses, nonprofits, and faith-based organizations as well. So <clears throat> how to request the van? Um, again, the email. We're also hopefully going to be developing a button on the um, DHHS website that you can use to engage the van and apparently call calling 211. Um, please request your van at a minimum of five business days prior to the date that you'd like them. Um, more time would be appreciated. There is currently no minimum threshold or number of vaccine recipients for requesting a van. And that's based on the, what we're seeing currently um, through the military efforts. Um, and also we don't want to disqualify anyone uh, in sort of the homebound um, type of scenarios as well. So no minimum threshold. Contact information um, and any questions. Oh, we'd be happy to take any questions that you might have if you'd like to ask a question of Taylor or Elizabeth. Um, uh, please uh, use the Q&A function um, that we have there. Um, Brian, is, uh, we're waiting just on a couple questions here. Um, could you please promote uh, Scott Colby and Dr. Ed Duffy, um, as well as uh, if Karen uh, Tribeweiler is, is, uh, is also uh, on the, the call for the next series. And I think Dr. Brewster, you've already moved up. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, the question is, are there multiple vans? Uh, at this point, we only know of one. Um, but I know that there are other organizations that have vans and uh, we are more than happy to work with other organizations uh, in this in this effort. Okay, and um, what you have, uh, someone asked if we could put back up on uh, the, the how to request the van. Um, and if you look to the chat area, uh, essentially right now, it's the uh, email address, nhmobilevax. Um, uh, and the contact information, if you want to talk with either uh, Elizabeth, if you could show that next slide. Um, Brian, there we go. Um, so there's Elizabeth's uh, contact information um, uh, that you have. Um, if you want to talk directly with her about more information about this effort. Um, all right, uh, so thank you uh, very much, uh, both uh, Elizabeth and Taylor for this information. Sounds like a, a wonderful effort. Uh, my understanding is you mentioned that um, this has been approved um, and you're working with Convenient MD on this uh, mobile van effort. Sounds like it's wonderful. We will help uh, continue to promote uh, its use. Um, and thank you again for talking with us uh, today about this wonderful effort. Um, thank terrific. you. And move now um, to our, our next uh, uh, van project. And this is a um, project with Harvard Pilgrim and the Northern uh, New Hampshire Hospitals uh, on a mobile van uh, effort. And I'd like to introduce Dr. William Brewster uh, and Karen, uh, Karen, I'm gonna slot your name, uh, Treeweiler. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Um, uh, as well as uh, Scott Kobe uh, uh, and uh, Dr. Edward uh, Duffy. Uh, if you can turn your cameras on. Um, uh, so I will uh, leave that to uh, Dr. Brewster, if you can turn your camera on. For some reason, my camera is not behaving itself. And if, right. I, if I log off and get back on, I'll, it'll be a problem. So you'll just, right. have, you'll just have to imagine how good looking I am. Um, so just a, a quick thing about me and people who know me know that I've never been quick. 
I will try. Uh, I'm an internal medicine doc. I've practiced in New Hampshire for about 35 years, uh, both in North Conway and on the seacoast in Rochester and Summersworth, New Hampshire. Um, I joined Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare about uh, 12 years ago, and I was uh, the medical director for a number of years, and then uh, for the last five years have been the vice president responsible for the Harvard Pilgrim team in New Hampshire. Um, back when we closed our office and COVID hit, um, almost immediately I could see, we could see a difference in access to care, the severity of illness, um, as well as immunization rates once they came out uh, with uh, different parts of our, organ of our membership, which again, of all the people that should have access, should be able to afford it, they have commercial insurance. And yet there were all sorts of pockets of people, whether they were rural, whether they were people of color, uh, whether the socioeconomic um, kinds of reasons that we're not getting the same care as a lot of the rest of our members. So what was initially an idea I had about a mobile van to go out and actually help provide vaccinations, um, not knowing exactly how those are going to be rolled out, it, it quickly became something to try to deal with some of the health literacy issues and some of the uh, health equity issues that we were seeing across our membership and across our uh, four states. Um, that was Bill Brewster's bright idea. Let's get a van. Let's equip it so people could actually do telemedicine, um, so they could get vaccines with refrigeration and freezers, um, and uh, quickly morphed into this much bigger project that I then had to actually ask an expert uh, and phone a friend, and that was Karen, who's uh, part of our innovations team, to actually make it something where I could go with my handout to the Harvard Pilgrim Foundation. Um, to ask for half a million dollars to both fund the van, uh, sustain the van, uh, and uh, expand in the actual scope. So Karen, um, if you don't mind just uh, going through a few of the slides, and then I'd like to have Ed and Scott kind of give their view on how they feel like their communities might be able to use the van, because I think clearly this should not be a Harvard Pilgrim, Bill Brewster van, it should be a community van uh, that does uh, fulfill the needs in your communities. So hi everyone, uh, Karen Trowiler. As um, Bill said, I'm on the uh, innovation team at Harvard Pilgrim. Um, and when I got pulled into this project, I was delighted because I really think that this is such a great initiative. And, and you know, the more I got into the, the program, really saw the need. Um, so you know, what started out as an idea coming out of how are we going to get the COVID vaccines out there really morphed into something more. And you know, the, the potential use for a mobile clinic um, through uh, Northern New Hampshire. Um, really addressed what we were trying to um, achieve, which was providing access. How do we reduce geographic and economic barriers, um, and, and what's the best way of doing this? And you know, um, we had a lot of internal conversations early on um, as we started to um, develop a business case, and we quickly realized that um, we couldn't do this alone, nor should we do this alone. That we really needed to. Um, partner with those in the community to really make an impact and really um, be able to use the clinics um, in the best way possible. Um, Bill spoke a lot about this, but you know we we know there are pockets of New Hampshire um, that have limited access, um, and how do we help those communities? Um, and so you know the idea was to develop a mobile clinic um, that could be out in the community. Um, in serving them in different ways. So whether it's um, through you know, wellness education, making the connections to the local providers, um, really you know, triaging the issue and providing, connecting the, the um, community to uh, community services. Um, our goal, really breaking down access barriers, um, combating health disparities, and really um, improving medical and healthcare literacy. Um, you know, our initial rollout of this, we are focused on um, the Northern um, New Hampshire communities, um, you know, in the effort of um, learning how we can use this, how we can help people um, with the ultimate goal of expanding beyond um, Northern community to other areas um, throughout um, New Hampshire. Um, I think you all know this, so I won't take up time in, in kind of laying out, um, you know, the need. Uh, but what I will draw your attention to is, and this is where our, you know, our partners have come in, is as we um, looked at the, the service area, we kind of played around with this a few different times. And you know, our ultimate goal would be to um, be in and around 
um, Northern, New Hampshire, Northern New Hampshire on a scheduled um, basis, getting out to the communities. So where you're seeing the circles here, recognizing that you know it's a good 20 miles um, for folks to get to the local provider. So how do we get out into those areas um, and provide the services they need? Now, each one of the circled areas um, that you see on the screen um, may not have the same need for the van. So the beauty of this is that you know based on um, the area and the specific need of the area, the services can be um, customizable for that particular area. So if we know an area has a greater uh, need for a substance use um, program, disorder programs, um, we can put those in play um, and, and pull in the, the provider, the local providers um, and services to, to make that happen. So, um, so that's kind of the high level um, overview of um, this initiative. Bill, anything I left out or you'd want to add? No, that was great, Karen. Um, and again, I think one of the things that happened fairly quickly was uh, the word got out. And I, I'm always a little loath to go out and start talking about something until I know I have funding. But the uh, providers in northern New Hampshire have just been unbelievably helpful. And actually, we're starting to reach out before I even knew if I was going to have a half a million dollars. We were able to secure that last week, June 17th, the, the full foundation board voted and they awarded $500,000 in matching funds. I've already been able to get commitments from uh, many of the North Country providers to match those funds. We're also looking at grants. And again, if any of you have extra money lying around, by all means, uh, send it our way. We're hoping to buy, in the next few weeks, hopefully be able to get enough matching funds to be able to put a deposit down on the van. The van is around 300 plus dollars. So we are hoping to get uh, 60,000 from the communities to match 60,000 from Harvard Pilgrim. That'll let us put a deposit down. There's about a five to six month lead time on the van. Um, so we can get started and hopefully by the end of the year have the van available. I also wanna make sure I don't overlook Jim and the Medical Society. We needed as a 501c3 nonprofit company, which we are, uh, our funds needed to go to a 501c3. Uh, we also needed help setting up governance and Jim, without hesitation, uh, again, just stepped in and said, yeah, I can do that. Um, I can be the person that uh, manages the funds, sets up governance, works with the providers. So um, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, and then Scott and Ed, again, you guys have been great. Is there, are there things that you'd like to talk about and uh, mention the things you see for the van opportunities? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, uh, Dr. Duffy, you mind if I just jump in real quick? Jump away. Great, thank you. Um, I, I think that you know the Harvard Pilgrim idea and the foundation coming forth to help provide access to the remote geography of the North Country is critical. And if you look at this map and you look at Colebrook, so that's where I'm sitting right now. I'm with Upper Connecticut Valley Hospital. And I like to say this um, because I don't know that many people realize the geography uh, that we have up here. To go from Colebrook to Littleton, if you can see where Littleton is on the western side down, it actually takes longer to drive that distance than it does to go from Manchester to Lebanon, to go from CMC to Dartmouth Hitchcock. When you see Colebrook and you go up to the, to the very top of the state, it can take close to an hour in good weather to arrive there. So the point is that geography is a barrier to access or care. And with a van like this, that can help us deploy vaccines for COVID, for influenza, that can help deploy APPs in the communities of Pittsburgh and Errol is critical. Um, and so this is a very innovative idea. The North Country Healthcare System, along with other partners in the, in the North Country, um, are supportive of this, and we anticipate being able to assist with funding. Yeah, I would just echo Scott's, Scott's uh words uh, concerning the need and how it could be used. Geography is everything. And, um, you know, the, there, there, there are pockets of individuals throughout the state, from Nashua all the way to Pittsburgh, that, uh, you know, are, are low income or a spe are special needs uh, or, 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 or disenfranchised in some way. But many, many people in the North Country, we have all that, plus the, they don't have the 
the opportunity or the, the means to move from place to place and go from, let's say, uh, their house uh, in North Stratford to a hospital if they need to. So this is important. Um, it can do plenty of things. COVID is in front of us right now. Uh, we've done very well in the North Country. I just want to put out a plug. Uh, you know, we, we have very high rates of vaccine. The hospitals have banded together and done a tremendous job from North Conway all the way north. Um, and we've, we've really reached a lot of people. Uh, so there's, there's more to do. There's this basic, basic health care, um, following up on, um, on prescription adherence, et cetera. So this is a great idea. It's a great program, and we're happy to be part of it. And I just wanted to make sure that, thank you, guys. I want to make sure that everybody understands this is not for Harvard Pilgrim members, per se. This is for anybody. This is for the citizens of the North Country. Um, and uh, if people are feeling left out at all, I mean, I have grand plans all the time. Karen's probably going, oh, my God, no. Um, but if this is a success, which with the help of the providers already and with Jim's help, um, I could see doing more vans to fill in parts of the state that don't already have the excellent service that we're going to hear about. We've already heard about and we'll you know, continue to hear about today. So uh, this is just the start, I hope. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Bill and Ed and Scott and Karen. This is a wonderful activity. The Medical Society is pleased to uh, help participate and, and coordinate this as we move forward. Uh, we very much look forward to it. And thank you all for the initiative that you've taken to help uh, uh, get this off the ground. Um, and particularly Bill and Karen with everything that's uh, ha happening in the transition uh, for Harvard Pilgrim with Tufts. Uh, you guys have done an amazing job to, to make sure that the funding uh, was delivered before those, those mechanisms had to change. So again, thank you. More information will be coming on this project. Um, we'll be developing uh, with uh, the participating uh, hospitals and other stakeholders a governance board um, this summer um, to help lead these efforts forward and develop a, an operational plan um, so we'll have that in place and hopefully have all the structures uh, behind it. So when the van is delivered, uh, we'll be able to hit the, the ground running. So again, thank you everyone uh, for a wonderful effort um, and coming in today to talk a little bit about it. Uh, next, uh, uh, again, thank you all. Um, uh, Brian, if we could have you, Victoria and, and uh, uh, Michelle come up. There they are. I'd like to introduce uh, to you uh, Victoria Adewumi um, and uh, Michelle Graham. Uh, and hopefully, Victoria, I didn't slaughter your last name too badly. Um, uh, but I um, uh, wanted to have you talk, uh, if you could, a little bit uh, about uh, Manchester's uh, Wellness on Wheels or the WOW Summer Series that you're you're planning uh, to do. Uh, it sounds like a great initiative. And if you can help enlighten uh, our stakeholders here, um, we very much appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, hopefully I do this right the first time. There we go. And All right. So are you able to see the slide? We are. Okay, great. Um, so the, um, first of all, I'm Michelle Graham and I'm the uh, supervisor for the Neighborhood and Family Health Branch at uh, the City of Manchester Health Department. And Victoria um, is, is here with me today. She's our community liaison and she is working with our, our team of community health workers around COVID and um, more importantly, social determinants of health issues. So the Wellness on Wheel project really um, is being spearheaded. I, I have to give credit to Amoscape Health. And the whole idea was we have these resources in our community right now. We have the, our mobile health clinic, the health department. We have our, um, our dental van. Um, and then the school district has their bookmobile and Oris has their new mobile farmer's market. And a lot of these resources are going to the same places just on the different days. And we thought, why not pull everything together, organize the services and see what other partners we can 
um, we can pull into the mix so that when we're, um, you know, we're not serving somebody with just a single service that we're really broadening that whole range and really connecting people to um, a lot of different opportunities. So the idea um, initially referred to as a mobile wellness park was to identify some places in Manchester where we could park all of these kind of anchor programs, if you will, and then bring in tents with some other community partners and almost do like a, a very quick pop-up wellness fair. And so the, the partners that we'll have at these events, um, the health department, we're going to be doing um, outreach related to our school-based oral health program and signing uh, kids up for our program in the fall. Uh, we are going to be offering um, COVID-19 COVID vaccines, including both Pfizer and J&J &J on the spot. And our community health workers are going to be doing um, some family needs surveys. That's really looking at needs around the social determinants of health in the community. Um, the Bookmobile is, is going to be there doing their, their usual thing, um, but also helping to sign families up for free and reduced place meals. Um, Launch Manchester will be doing a uh, their own version of a family needs survey and and promoting their they have a grant uh, for some financial literacy programs and so they're going to be promoting enrollment in those. We'll have the New Hampshire Food Bank there who that will be filling out applications for SNAP and talking to people about the extra benefit that they get if they use their SNAP um, dollars on fresh foods at the farmer's market. And they can use them right there actually at the mobile farmer's market. Um, making it happen, we'll be there um, promoting some of their um, drug and alcohol training and information and programs. Uh, we'll have cooperative extension, enrolling people in some of their classes that they do right in our community schools. Uh, we have team from DHHS doing New Hampshire Easy Enrollment, Southern New Hampshire Services, and Manchester Parks and Rec. So we're really trying to serve all of those broad needs and give people the opportunity um, to just get signed up right then and there, not just get information, but let's take the next step and sign you up. We have our community health workers who can follow up, make sure everything went well with that application and really kind of work toward um, making sure we, we reach a place of success with these families. So the way we identify the four communities that we're piloting for this program this summer um, is basically using the, the CDC Social Vulnerability Index. And um, for those of you who um, aren't familiar with this index, it's basically used for just at disaster preparedness uh, purposes to identify communities that would have a a low resilience um, during a natural disaster. So they're generally under-resourced communities that um, that are defined essentially as a with a, a a vulnerability index ranging from zero to one, with one being the highest level of vulnerability. So we also look at this um, from a public health perspective as a great way of identifying. Um, communities that, again, are under-resourced, but also that have limited access to transportation and other needs like that. So basically uh, a way of pri prioritizing those communities that need our help, that need the services to come to them, as opposed to them going out and trying to reach this broad range of services themselves. So with that in mind, um, we picked four locations at the center of the city. You can see um, that kind of dark area in the middle that's, that ranges from um, basically 0.75 to one on the social vulnerability index. So these are our really high need, uh, low access communities. And so we picked um, Gossel Park School and B Street School, which are two of our community schools in Manchester, and then also Kelly Falls and Elmwood Gardens, which are public housing um, communities in the city. And so these are the dates where we're going to be um, at all of these locations. And uh, we do have our community epidemiologists working with us to collect some data around um, individual connections um, to services at these events, because obviously the idea is um, not just to give out information, but to really 
find ways of connecting people to services that they didn't have access to before. And so through these four kind of pilot events over the summer, um, we're really hoping to get, um, get a, a good understanding of whether or not we have the right services there, what more we need to bring in, um, how better we can reach these communities and kind of think about what is our long-term plan for placing services in the communities where they're needed. And I believe Victoria is going to share our flyer in the chat. Um, so if you want to, certainly if you want to hand that out to anybody, um, we would love for you to, to uh, send that out broadly. And I'm going to end just with my contact information here. If anybody um, wants to talk more about the project or get more information about the individual services that we will have there, um, and certainly, you know, if you have ideas about additional services that we can be including, we would love to hear that. And that is all I have. And I'm sorry, I, talk, I, I tend to talk very fast. That's terrific. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Victoria, anything to add to, to that? Um... Victoria, I think you're muted. There we go. Just that we are excited um, to have this group connected. And if folks want to attend, like Michelle was saying, if folks want to spread the word for us, I don't think I can share it in the chat, unfortunately. But Jim, if I could send the flyer to you, if you could help us distribute um, to this group, that would be wonderful. Actually, we, we uh, sent that out in the invite uh, for today. So everyone's got that. that. Perfect. Um, and again, if uh, there is contact information, we will also have uh, this recording. So um, they'll have your contact information if they want to follow up. But we'll, when we go back out, we'll make sure we have the flyer and all that information. So if they can join in one of these four events. Uh, but this is really fantastic. Um, and it looks like you've done a lot of work. And uh, I wish you the best, best success. Again, if, if uh, anyone is interested in collaborating, um, uh, with uh, M Manchester Public Health uh, Department, then uh, please reach out to Michelle or Victoria um, as we're moving forward. Any closing thoughts, uh, any information that you have? Um, I do have um, kind of a, a request from, from Victoria that I wanted to uh, introduce because she's working with the New Hampshire um, Community Health Workers Coalition on a series uh, of webinars around vaccine hesitancy. And I know that they are, uh, they have a particular opportunity that they're looking for a speaker. So I'll let Victoria describe that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michelle. So we are eagerly looking for a speaker that could support us on July 23rd for just about um, uh, an hour. So 30 minutes of presentation and then 20 minutes of Q&A um, with some opening and closing from the coalition at the top and at the end of that. Specifically, we're really um, reaching out to our friends in the Southern tier and hopeful that someone might be able to engage our community health worker audience on topics of what you're seeing uh, in, in communities in need and how specifically you're really managing misinformation or hesitancy around the vaccine. We know, especially in historically marginalized communities, that oftentimes the information that does get out um, may not always be accurate. And so we're really interested in any practitioners or anyone who might be interested in helping us share the, the good word on how uh, communities in need can be reached. And for those of you, I'm sure most in, the, in this group are familiar, but community health workers are oftentimes bilingual, bicultural bridges between the healthcare or medical system and communities. And so we'd be really excited to engage someone who could help us in that. That's terrific. Um, uh, yes, uh, so those uh, practitioners, providers who are involved will also do a little bit more digging for you. Uh, again, that's uh, the date is uh, July 23rd, uh, a 30 minute presentation uh, with 20 minutes for Q&A. Um, and I'm uh, assuming this is a Zoom form. Okay. It is a Zoom uh, format, absolutely. Very good. Well, thank you. We will try to, to make sure we get someone for, uh, for that event for you. Uh, but thank you again, uh, uh, both Michelle and Victoria. This is a wonderful 
outreach effort uh, that I'm sure can be modeled by other uh, local communities. Um, and I, we encourage everyone to, you know, to beg, borrow, and steal these ideas um, <laughs> to anything that works and, and helping um, uh, drive up the immunization rates, uh, particularly to disadvantaged uh, uh, communities. Um, uh, and uh, and that's, uh, so again, thank you. Uh, that's a, probably a great segue for just uh, uh, the one Q&A uh, we have. And uh, uh, the question is, uh, what is the immunization rate for 12 to 17 year olds by county? Um, to my knowledge, that's not available yet, but your timing is impeccable. We're going to have some discussions uh, tomorrow, I believe. I'm going to have some discussions um, uh, with the leadership from the Division of uh, Public uh, uh, Health Services. Um, we're going to be talking about that issue of how that information on immunization uh, rates uh, for specific cohorts related to COVID, how that information can be more readily accessible. And over the summer into the fall, how we can potentially um, use the uh, growing information in the IIS um, to help do some targeting into communities. Uh, so to get local communities a, a better sense by zip code or even uh, sub zip code of uh, where uh, the immunization rates are, are lower. Um, and that'll probably help, help uh, all of our various stakeholders kind of move their efforts forward. So we're doing that. We're also talking I'm going to be talking about a uh, kind of a master um, uh, immunization uh, plan that's evergreen or on, on an annual basis that uh, we can do because it occurs to me and others um, that some uh, immunization uh, for various cohorts happen at regular intervals through the year. Um, and what we want to do is help get a coordinated effort where other stakeholders, other organizations have greater lead time, actually can maybe budget information resources uh, to uh, more kind of coordinated efforts, whether it's flu or the adolescent uh, uh, vaccine uh, regimen, um, or even those uh, some in the senior populations. I think what we've learned through this process is that uh, each of those cohorts have unique uh, uh, stakeholders involved and it's trying to utilize them. I'm not looking at this necessarily unilaterally or linearly, but how do we break that down uh, across uh, various stakeholder populations too, uh, to see what we can do and helping promote. Um, since New Hampshire was the 50th state um, in the union to have a vaccine registry, um, our goal is to cut down in half. So most of these efforts take at least five to six years to get them up and running. And I have a personal goal to say, let's cut that in half. Um, but it's gonna take everyone, everyone, all, all the stakeholders involved to make sure that that happens and, and participating. Um, uh, and uh, so I think that will be probably assisted by late summer into the fall with some of the federal grants um, and other things moving forward on that initiative. But, we also would like to have an umbrella plan um, that the state can help endorse um, that helps local efforts and allows that, uh, that added planning um, and promotion from various stakeholders. So thank you very much, Victoria and, and Michelle. Again, appreciate your time and, and your wonderful efforts that, that you're doing this summer. Um, and we'll look forward to uh, uh, maybe we can have you back uh, in late July and, and kind of talk about lessons learned um, and how that's moving forward. Thank you very much. We look forward to it. All right, take care. Um, so uh, I, we've been looking for uh, someone from uh, the Greater Nashua uh, Regional Public Health Network um, who intended, but uh, I don't think we see them on the call uh, at this time. Um, and uh, so uh, unless anyone has any other uh, information or questions, that uh, you'd like us to answer that kind of where we're at. Um, keep in mind, I know a lot of folks are off on vacation. Um, that's why our numbers are a little bit down. Um, and so this information is recorded and we'll make it available to everyone who has previously participated uh, in these calls. We'll send that out, should be available tomorrow uh, with the other information um, that you've seen, including the flyer and other things um, uh, that uh, were part of this uh, presentation. 
moving forward, uh, I think our next alliance meeting uh, or some semblance of it will probably be in the latter half of July when we should want to have some more information on the federal grants and how those are proceeding and get you a more uh, narrow timeline on when that will be available, um, as well as some of the uh, updated uh, efforts that are going across the, the state and how that's uh, proceeding. There is an, another uh, a vaccine immunization um, uh, uh, alliance effort that's being done by the New Hampshire uh, Public Health Association um, as a set subcontract to a state grant. Um, we'll be working with them and try to coordinate um, and so we don't duplicate efforts um, and uh, try to collaborate as much as we can on making sure that we're using your time wisely as we move forward uh, with this, these kind of information sessions. But again, I want to thank you all uh, for uh, your uh, participation uh, over the it's now uh, seven months um, that uh, folks have been involved in this effort. Uh, so we'll be cutting back a little bit and we'll give you lots of lead time on our next alliance meeting and how that's going to form. Um, but I anticipate uh, late uh, latter part of uh, July um, and then we'll probably ramp up a little bit more into August as we anticipate some efforts to target uh, in schools the 12 to 17 year population that's essentially middle and high schools. Uh, and hopefully by late summer we'll have a better idea with the emergency use authorization request uh, for the pediatric uh, population under 12 uh, at that time and begin, begin uh, better coordinating that campaign. Again, we'll need all your help um, as we move forward. And as you saw today, um, just a wonderful uh, uh, initial effort of various activities on mobile uh, vans for health promotion. Um, and uh, with that, uh, I want to say again, thank you. And we'll look forward to catching up with you uh, in a month. If you have any information in the interim, um, please uh, email me um, or uh, give me a call and we'll be uh, happy to help uh, promote uh, what you're doing. Um, and as these move forward, um, uh, work together to, to make uh, uh, immunization rates much higher um, in the Grand Lake State. So again, thank you um, and look forward to talking with you soon. Take care.